In this video, we're going to show how to return custom claims from an API endpoint and have them included in access tokens. Let's have a look at a very simple Node.js API. There's a single HTTP GET endpoint. At the time of token issuance, security identity server will pass in a subject claim, and the API returns two custom claims for a user ID and a user role. We're dealing with an order scenario here, and typically the user ID will be used to ensure that the user can only access their own orders, and the user role will be used for extended purposes, such as enabling an admin user to see all orders. So a very sim simple API. Um, the idea is that this would be hosted uh, in a backend cluster alongside the Curity Identity Server, and to secure this endpoint, we're just using basic authentication for demo purposes. We can actually run the API locally um, and then call it using the curl tool. So here I'm passing in a subject claim of demo user and some basic credentials and also using the JQ tool to visualize the results. Um, so the, to the claims issued are hard coded in this example, but a real API would look them up from a database um, or apply some custom logic, and then they'll be included in access tokens uh, that APIs receive on every request. So the Curity Identity Server will call this custom API in exactly the same way as the curl tool, and next we'll focus on uh, configuring the Curity Identity Server. Let's proceed by going to the admin UI and logging in. And under the token service, uh, the scopes area gives you a window where you can register any uh, custom claims and scopes and say which tokens they go into. And this is very powerful. There's many ways of doing it. Let's just um, register the claims for our uh, demo scenario, user ID. And at first, I'm just going to accept the defaults in this window here. Uh, let's also register the user role. And I'm going to compose these two uh, custom claims into a custom scope. Because we're dealing with an orders theme, I'm going to call it orders read. And what I'm saying is that um, any client with an access token containing the orders read scope will also have the user ID and user role uh, claims. So um, the token will be able to access all the information in a read-only manner. Um, but also use the user ID and user role um, claims for finer grained access to which individual order items the user is allowed to see. And so uh, because we're dealing with authorization related claims and scopes, they only need to go into the access token. So I can just drag the um, orders read scope into the access token and the claims will then be issued into the access token. So that's the basics. The next thing to understand is that claims have runtime values and they're different for different users. What we need to do next is we need to have a claims provider to um, say how to get the values. So the way to do that is to go to the claims provider window. I'm going to create a new one called custom claims provider and I'm going to use that API as a data source. Um, this one I created earlier, we'll have a brief look at it uh, shortly. But now that that's done, I'm in a position to actually say how the claims get their values. So I can return to the token designer window and I can um, assign the custom claims provider. And here I'm saying that the user ID attribute from the API response becomes a user ID claim. Oops, let me do that again, add attribute. So the user ID attribute from the API response becomes a user ID claim. Um, the user role will do exactly the same thing. Custom claims provider. Add that attribute. And there you go. So the, the values are actually being provided from the um, uh, attribute of the API response, which makes sense for our scenario. So the only thing left to do is to understand uh, the, how the connection to the API works. And there's two parts to that, and it's managed via the facilities menu. Firstly, there's an HTTP client. Um, this just looks after the reliability of the connection. It provides the basic credentials that the custom API requires. Um, it can get through proxies and things like that if we 
required. You can even do things like raise alarms if this connection fails. Next, there's the concept of a, a data source. So the claims data source, we're using a JSON data source, and there's a, a number of properties here. Um, because I'm running the Curity Identity Server in Docker, this is actually, I'm actually using a host name that reaches out to the host computer. But in a real scenario, this would be the, um, the host name of the, uh, where the API is run. Um, the main parts of the configuration are to say that the, um, we're going to use the HP client, we're going to call the API on this path and send in the subject claim in, the, uh, in this path segment. So that's, every, that's the configuration fully described. Uh, let's commit those changes. And the only thing left to do is to test the token issuing end-to-end. -end. We're going to uh, test the custom token issuing in a visual manner. If I return to the browser, firstly, I've registered a, a web client um, in the uh, Curity Identity Server in the admin UI. And I've added the custom scope that we created earlier. And this means that the client will receive an access token containing the custom claims for user ID and user role. I've given the client the code flow capability. And um, in order to look at tokens, I've also given it the introspection capability. So we can switch to all those tools now, and we can use this client to uh, run a code flow. Let's do that. And I'm going to sign in as this test user called demo user. In the standard way, the um, uh, identity server has returned uh, an authorization code. Let's redeem that for tokens. And here's a set of tokens we uh, receive. And by default, the access token has an um, opaque format, which is good from a security viewpoint. But we're going to introspect it to see what's inside. So when the API receives the token, this is the information the API will receive. Uh, firstly, it will get the, uh, the order suite scope, um, so it can do its high-level authorization checks. The, the API will also get a user ID of 189 and a user role of customer. And the API can then implement its authorization, such as filtering um, on orders that match user ID 189. And it can do that in a very simple way. And in addition, the, the claims received are digitally verifiable because they, because they come from the authorization server and because the JOT containing these details is digitally signed with uh, a token signing private key that's only known to the Curity Identity Server. So this is good from a security viewpoint, but also from the viewpoint of simple code. So that's the end-to-end -end process uh, fully described. As you can see, there's many powerful ways to use claims in the Curity Identity Server, and all of this makes your API authorization uh, simple and secure. I hope all of that made sense. Thank you very much for listening.